What's going on guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I cut the cost of my laser materials by more than half. The prices that I have checked against, I've checked against eBay and I've checked against Kitronic because they're the two places that I was getting materials from. You can get them from Amazon but they seem to be a lot more expensive than what eBay is, more for convenience and things like that and, and there's lots of sellers competing with each other on eBay for prices. So the material I'm talking about is 4mm MDF. I buy these in 8 foot by 4 foot sheets which is 2400 by 1200 roughly millimetres and then I cut them down into these. These are 500 by 300 millimetre sheets. These fit perfectly on my laser and I'll show you the process of how I break these down into the sheets. Price wise these sheets work out at around 89 pence per sheet. This has gone up dramatically over the past few months. I used to get these at 52 pence a sheet for the 500 by 300. The same material from Kitronic shipped to your address uh, works out at £2.10 per sheet. I just had to double check that I had my notes right there. Yes, £2.10 per sheet. That's going off uh, a bulk buy of 10 of these sheets, which is what you would get out of one 8x4 sheet. That works out at £21.60 shipped to your address. So you divide that by 10, it's £2.16 uh, per sheet. So that is really expensive compared to the 89 pence per sheet. On eBay, one sheet of the 500 by 300 in four millimeters, it was quite difficult to find. They did it in 300 by 600, again, which is what Kitronic sells. So it's, it's, it's a little bit longer, but there's no point because that doesn't fit onto my laser and it probably doesn't fit onto your laser either. On eBay, one of these uh, at 300 by 600. So again, it's a little bit longer, uh, same height. For four millimeters, really difficult to find this was £15 for one. That's unbelievable, like the whole sheet, that's nearly double what one whole sheet of the, the material costs from the supplier. So if you're looking on eBay for four millimetre MDF, don't bother, just go directly to your local lumber yard and go look, can you cut one of these down? Uh, they'll probably charge you to cut it down for you and it'll probably end up cheaper, but because I've got my workshop and I can cut it down myself, I can just go and pick it up a 4x4 four four sheet, uh, they cut it right in half, so it's two 4x4 four four sheets out of an 8x4. They fit in the back of my car, and then I can just drive around to my workshop, and I can cut them down into here. So I'm going to show you the process of me cutting them down, and talk you through how easy and how quick you can cut these down and save yourself an absolute fortune. I'll stick links to everything that I use, all the tools, uh, in the description below, so you can get similar. Uh, if it's not the exact same tool, because it might not be available still, uh, then obviously uh, I'll just link something as close as I can to that. And hopefully you guys can find a way of working this out for yourselves. Uh, so let's get to it. The process I used to break these sheets down is quite simple. I made this quick little jig out of some scrap plywood and MDF that I had lying around. And this measures exactly 30 centimeters from the back of my track to the cut side of my track saw. This helps me break them down to the 300 mil width and then I go over to my table saw and use the table saw sled to cut them down into the 500 mil length. Overall to cut three full sheets of 8 foot by 4 foot which is six of these smaller sheets 4 by 4 it took me around half an hour and that's not even really rushing, that's just taking my time and just enjoying the process and making sure everything goes smoothly. As you can see that first cut took me 40 seconds to line up and do the cut and then move on to the next piece. So I'll speed up this whole process a little bit and you can just watch as I cut through all these sheets. I'll probably double or even quadruple the speed until we get over to the table saw and then I'll explain how I set the table saw up then. The very last piece always ends up a centimetre bigger because the board isn't 1200 wide, it's 1220 and then with the K 
curve of the saw blade that takes roughly a centimeter off so it's roughly a centimeter bigger it doesn't make that much difference it still fits on my laser fine and you just get that little bit extra play when you're doing a larger design as you can see using my hoover attached to the track saw there's hardly any dust left over um, you can just see the dust building up at the end of the cut and uh, that's where it just spills out the front and the dust extraction isn't amazing on this track so it's one of the cheapest ones you can get so I wasn't expecting much um, most of the dust does get sucked up by the vacuum and even when I'm on site I can add the sock attachment to the back of it and it does catch most of it in there I just need to remember that it does fill up very quickly and I have to keep emptying it otherwise it just clogs up and just all spills out the front I'm also using my sacrificial fold up table which I did a short little video on how to set up this takes me less than a minute to put into place and then I can just chop down all the material on top of there and I, as you can see it gets a lot of use this is just made up from two old doors that I took off took from a property I was replacing the doors for a customer and I just took away the old doors I still have four or five of these left over and they, they last me roughly a year anyway to cut with my track saw this way so it, it saves me going by some king span or some insulation board or anything like that and it's the perfect height for me anyway and it just folds away nicely into the corner of my workshop So we're over at the table saw now and I have my piece of wood clamped at 500mm. Because I use 500mm a lot I've marked on the back of my table saw sled several different dimensions. Uh, I've got 210, 300 and 500mm because they're what I use a lot. I cut these two boards at a time. As you see I've just got them stacked up behind me. I'm doing the ones that ended up 31 centimeters wide 310 millimeters wide before the ones that were 300 millimeters wide just to keep them even and it just it just helped me in my mind um, to, for stacking them up this saw does kick up quite a lot of dust so uh, I do recommend using dust protection uh, especially on this one it's not too bad with my track saw because it only comes out the, the front of the saw but I would recommend using any kind of dust mask when you're working with MDF anyway because it is very bad to be breathing that stuff in as you can see this is a very quick but very repetitive process you get two of the 500 by 300s and one of the 200 by 300s and then I just stack them at the front of my table saw sled and then when it starts to get a little bit heavy and then I just take them off and pile them up behind so that's it guys thanks for watching if this video helped you out then please give it a good thumbs up if you want more tips and tricks like this then hit that subscribe button and I will do videos like this fairly often whenever I find a way of saving myself some money I'm going to pass that information on to you guys and hopefully we can all save a little bit of money and we can all have a great time lasering together. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.